Mayor Mac Dickerson has managed to come in this morning. Good morning, mate. How are you going? Yeah, good thanks, Keegan. Good to see you. <laughs> good to see you as well. I hear you managed to check out, check out the Dubbo show yesterday. Duck down there yesterday. It was looking pretty good for all the rain we had, actually. Mm. The ground wasn't in too bad a condition. There was a little bit of water, a little bit of a few tracks on the ground. But still, even on a Sunday afternoon, the crowds were good. And I remember when my kids were young enough that they used to go to the show. They, they didn't go to the show this year. They're a bit old and not in Dubbo at the moment, but <laughs> yeah, a enough. bit old to go to the show. Uh, I suppose you're never too old to go to the show show but I, uh, I know we used to try and go down there on the Sunday because that was when the crowds weren't as busy yeah, right. but I think towards the end of the time we used to take our kids to the show everyone had the same idea so we used to get on Sunday <laughs> and go that's just as busy as it was on the Saturday and the Friday yeah. what are we doing this for but it was still good and I, I spoke to the show society they didn't have any final numbers but certainly their gut feel was that it was a good show lots of people going through lots of good numbers they of course used one two three ticks for their yep. ticketing now so they've got to wait for the reports to come through from one two three ticks whereas the old days they could count the money at the end of each day and know how many people went through yeah, the door the exact amount yeah but we'll, I'm sure we'll get a report from them this week in terms of the numbers but again it looked good Lots of different activities there, lots of different 100%. stands, lots of different buses and different companies there. So it is a great event. And you're only new to Dubbo, but it has been a tradition for as long as I can remember from growing oh, up here as sure a kid. That, I don't doubt that. Well, no, no. The tradition is that it rains for oh, the Dubbo right. show. Well, so. I don't doubt that either. That's <laughs> what I experienced over the weekend. We were almost washed out on Saturday morning. Yeah. So I think, to be fair to them, there's probably only ever been once in the living memory of the committee members where they've actually had to claim insurance for rain oh. but it, it's just one of those little things that's like oh it's the Dubbo show it's always raining but it just <laughs> you can feels guess, like that's you can always guess the, the weather based off whether the Dubbo show's in town that weekend well during a drought some people say just put on a Dubbo show and that'll solve the drought problem <laughs> it's equivalent to a rain dance I'm it sure is it works just as well um, speaking of another sort of festival that's been going on for I think it's uh, not too sure of how long so far but the Dream Festival it's been in the news a lot recently what's been going on with that yeah so that's been going on about 2011 that started out around that oh, sort of right. era so it's been going since then now there has been some discussion because council were asked to run it the committee had gotten to the stage where it had gotten too big for the committee to keep running it so council was asked to run it which we did do last year and then there's been some discussion with councillors with staff and with the community around continuing on under council's management or mm. running that or whether the community should run that. So we actually did an EOI process and the results of that came back to our committee meetings last Thursday night. And as a result of that, there was one organisation that said, we'll put in an EOI, we don't want to run it, but we'll help someone else run it. So we're happy to support another organisation. Right. And then there was another organisation that said that they would run it. They, they great organisation and Oris got all name them, they're in the, the business papers anyway, mm. so they're a great organisation and they talked about lots of background that they have in running those type of events. They didn't give a lot of detail about what they would actually do to deliver on the, the dream of the dream, excuse the very bad pun there, right. but they certainly <laughs> talked about the idea of them running the dream. In the end, councillors at the committee meeting last week said that they, or well, they voted to put it into abeyance, so basically not run the dream, not give it to any organisation this year. The $40,000 that was allocated to DREAM will be then allocated half to events assistance and half to SPARC funding. Oh, right. And so effectively that would still go into the community different events. Yeah, yeah. But that's not the final decision. The final decision is not made until the council meeting on Thursday week. So that's a committee meeting. Committee meetings don't make council resolutions, they make oh, recommendations. Right. But the final decision isn't made until the council meeting. So I'm sure there'll be some further discussions with Oriscon and just with the community in general over the next week and a half as it is now to the council meeting before the final decision is made at the council meeting. But at this stage, the recommendation after the committee meeting was to put the dream into abeyance. The recommendation, right. So it's not set in stone. We could not hear some more stone. news on it. Well, you will hear some more news on it because there has to be a final decision yes. made still. What normally happens with committee meetings is normally you'll find that the recommendations from the committee meetings go to council and normally they're the same decision from council. But the right. beauty of that two-week gap from the committees to the council is there's more time for some community consultation. It's more time for the community to see what council is thinking about something, mm. to then give some more feedback to saying, oh, I didn't realise you were going that way. Oh, no, you definitely should be going this way. So you've got that great opportunity for some additional feedback, and then the final decision will be made on Thursday week. Another thing that I saw that I'm sure involved a lot of discussion and a lot of committees and a lot of people with opinions was it's actually the eight year anniversary of the amalgamation. Is that today or was that yesterday? Yesterday, yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah, 12th of May 2016, 12.10pm to be exact on that day. Right. The proclamation was made by the Governor on the advice, of course, of the Minister for Local Government, it was Paul Toole at the time. 
And so that was a, a big event. 37 different councils around the state were wow. amalgamated. Sometimes there were two councils made into one, as happened here. Sometimes there were three. I can't think of anyone there. There were four councils, but there were threes and there mm. were twos turned into one. And that was pretty disappointing at the time. There was a lot of discussion by the Wellington community, the Dubbo community. We had some polls. We had two separate polls that we ran on that. One had 83% against, the other one had 78% against. Right. We had a unanimous council decision against that. We had all of our councillors individually talking out against that. We had as our local member at the time, the Deputy Premier of the state. So fantastic, what a great person to have in our electorate to be arguing on behalf of what we wanted. Of course. And then there were some public meetings. And so those public meetings, uh, the majority, I, I won't say all, because there were some speakers that spoke in favour, but it might have been in the 90% range of people that spoke against the amalgamation after those. So after all that, the amalgamation went ahead, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course, just as things were. That's right. Not a very popular decision at the time. Mm. And I suppose my point now is that that was eight years and one day ago. Mm. You play the hand that you dealt. We've got the amalgamation. I didn't stand in the 2017 election because I felt a bit disingenuous that if I had have stood for election then, I've argued against this amalgamation. I don't believe in the amalgamation. It's and wrong. And you would take part in it afterwards. And then suddenly yeah. I put my hand up and go, OK, now please elect me to be a part of this newly mm. amalgamated council. So I didn't stand. I'd, I'd already done a number of years on council, a number of years as mayor, and I thought uh, it's probably time to move on and let someone else have a go, if you like. And then... Uh, now we are eight years later. I suppose the main thing, the main message I have now is we're one local government area. We're mm. 7,536 square kilometres. Wow. We're not old Wellington Shire Council, old Dubbo City Council. We're not, let's keep a division there and keep those two separate. Oh, back in the old days. And sometimes you do that. Sometimes you slip into that. It's just mm. human nature. But the focus certainly for me and the focus for certainly the majority of our councillors is really to say we're one council area how do we make this work better? How do we make it work together? And I think we're doing that in the main, and certainly there are opportunities there because we are an amalgamated council. So I think of the renewable energy zone, Dubbo would not have been a part of the renewable energy zone as the old boundaries existed. Right. So it would have just been Wellington. Dubbo is now part of that, so we're getting advantages out of that. And I think the fact that we're a larger council, we can probably take better advantage of some of those particular opportunities that we're getting as part of the res. But that's just one example there. I think overall, I, I think we're a better council now because of it, and we've got to make sure we make it work. Again, we're not going to unamalgamate, deamalgamate, we're not going to demerger. We're going forward with what we've got. Let's make it work as well as we possibly can. And reading through, I think, the post that you put on Facebook, it was actually quite an, a fascinating bit of history to see the timeline of how it occurred. When, uh, considering I've only moved to the area, I wasn't even aware it was so such a... Sh I mean, eight years in some people's minds would be a long amount of time, but I wasn't aware it was only such a short while ago that the councils were merged. I thought it had been around for ages. Well, that's probably a good thing. If you think it's been around for ages, it means... It's settling in. And people it's have moved working. on. That's right, and people have moved on. And look, I still have some people tell me that the amalgamation is terrible and we should revert back. And oh, you fought against it, Matthew. And, and I did. I, I fought against it as the mayor of Dubbo City Council. The mayor of Wellington was Anne Jones. She fought against it as well. But you have your fight. When the decision's made, you move on to the next thing. So you can only argue with the umpire for so long before you finally say, <laughs> right, accept the decision and let's play the ball. So again, that's where we're at now. We've got the amalgamation. Let's make this work as well as we possibly can. And I think, again, the majority of our councillors and certainly council is absolutely doing that. 100%, mate. We'll choose for coming in this morning. We'll have a chat in a couple of weeks again. Sounds good. Thanks, Kegan. Thanks, mate.